um, create Studio for the Arts. Um, we are located in Milton, uh, shops at Painter's Mill, which is right off of Cave Neck Road. Um, we actually have a somewhat similar business model to Paige. Um, we are, I myself am a music teacher, Siobhan is an art teacher, we've got Judy here who is our yoga teacher as well, and we also have a kids cooking teacher um, who is a school teacher, so she couldn't be here with us today, but um, we're really focused on the arts. Um, right now, our main focus is, is children, but we are eventually expanding into adults as well. We just opened um, September 1st. We had the idea in May, signed the lease in August, and started classes September 15th. So this has sort of been, um, it's kind of happening very rapidly, and it, but it's working for us. Um, so as you can see, we have classes and workshops. Um, we'd also like to do some parties and meetings. We have a great space um, for doing that kind of thing. Um, I'll kind of talk a little bit about each of us. Um, like I said, I am the music teacher. Um, my classes are called Making Music. It's for toddlers birth age, or ages birth to five. Um, it's a mommy and me class. Um, and I like to describe it as preschool through music. So while we are singing and dancing and wiggling, we're actually working on motor skills and balance. Um, we're working on um, we're working on counting. We're working on opposites and colors. Um, the kids have no idea they're learning, which is what makes it fun for them. <laughs> um, Siobhan is, like I said, she's our art teacher. Oh, this is going a lot faster than I thought. Um, <laughs> can I pause this? I I haven't done um, a PowerPoint presentation since college, which was almost 15 years ago. Um, so we are. Um, Siobhan does our art classes, and she does classes for children ages 18 months all the way up through adults. Oh, look, I can go to the previous slide. There you go. <laughs> Bear with me. This did not work this way when I previewed it on my computer. Um, so what art offers is a space, a certain breathing room for the spirit. And what we offer is the space for people to do that. We allow people to, to give themselves the permission and the time to get creative, to get messy, to explore new skills that they've never done before, or teach other people new skills. Um, and Siobhan and I were kind of talking yesterday about how in, um, in school and in art classes, we art kids, um, we kind of get pushed to the side. We, um, we tend to behave ourselves, and so <laughs> we get a little less attention. Um, and there are definitely, I think, stigmas attached to the art kids, to the theater kids, to the music kids. And so we're creating a space that people can feel safe doing that. And even if you don't have a creative mind, um, we're a nice place to be. We're, we're a safe haven. Um, so I kind of like that. Um, and I'm going to bring Siobhan up here now, and she's going to talk about some of the educational benefits of the arts. Um, I could be on my soapbox for hours, but um, Siobhan definitely has an organized thought <laughs> plan when it comes to that. So. Here you go. Okay. So, hello? You're, <laughs> you're, you're on. All right. Um, so one of the main develop, uh, developmental um, things that art helps with is, could you get that from Jim? <laughs> is it helps with fine motor skills. You can see his fine motor skills at work on the floor over there. <laughs> um, I'll clean that up. It's all washable. <laughs> so um, it helps to build motor skills, which is really important for learning basic skills like dressing and up to learning how to write and control a pencil. So it helps to build those, um, those muscles that, that are needed in the classroom. Um, it also helps with language development. And just in talking about artwork or making artwork, it helps because you're talking about what you see, what you hear, um, and what you experience. And that really helps to build the language that's important. It helps with decision making. Just going from, you know, I want to use the black crayon or the purple crayon, it really is important because those decisions carry over and it helps you to be aware of yourself as a decision maker. Um, it is also good for visual learning because we all see people doing things and that's how most of us learn because you watch other people do things. And so the arts are important for that, whether it's dancing or 
relaxing in a yoga class or cooking and making healthy decisions about what you eat. The um, cultural awareness, which is just a naturally occurring thing because you become aware of what other cultures are eating or what kind of music they're listening to and it becomes very obvious the perspective of others, which is an important thing to develop um, for all ages. Mm -hmm. And the, the last is improved academic performance, and that's been shown over and over that the connection to the arts greatly improves academic performance. And with the current core curriculum and the push for reading and math, the arts have been really pushed to the side and the, the amount of time that students spend making art is much, much less. So we are here because we do believe in the arts and we know of the many, many benefits that they can provide and we hope to grow our classes. Mm -hmm. so. Switch. <laughs> Um, and I just have a couple of last things. I just have some pictures of all the things that we do. Um, this is uh, kids yoga. Uh, when, uh, kids yoga goes from ages three up to nine. Um, we have three different classes for that. And actually, I have a handout with our class schedule on the back. Um, we've got, this was our adult art class. Um, we were a bunch of non-artists exploring watercolors. Um, and look what we've done. <laughs> Um, we've got um, printmaking with um, Siobhan. Uh, this was her five to eight-year-old, five to nine-year-old classes. Um, this is us in our music class. Um, that's my husband there on the guitar. <laughs> um, it's kind of like a, a rock concert for the kids. They get a CD of all the music, and then they come in, and they hear us play it live. Um, this is Katie, our cooking teacher. Um, she has sprouting chefs. This is one of the toddlers in our art class. Um, and this was their project. And this is Declan's art project from Saturday morning. <laughs> um, there's Ron and Declan painting our studio. And here's what it looks like now. There's my husband again in the background. Um, and that's, we put those mats down for our music class so the kids can bang around and, uh, and have a good time without too much noise. So I think that's it presentation-wise. <laughs> Let's give Nancy a round of applause and Siobhan as well. <laughs> Questions from the audience? One hand. Jamie. Hi, I'm Hi. Jamie. Hi. This is my friend Nancy. <laughs> Hi. Very proud of you. Um, <laughs> Jamie's the one who told me about this, so thank you. <laughs> if you could share with us just real briefly uh, where you're located and a little bit about your fee schedule. Is it um, pop in, walk in, appointment, register, anything? Of so we are um, we're located in the shops in Painters Mill, which is in Milton. It's just off of Cave Neck Road. Um, so if you turn onto Cave Neck Road, we're about a half mile back, um, and there's a it's a whole community there, and they have their little shopping area right in the front. So we're right as you come in the entrance. Um, as far as the fee schedule goes, um, right now classes are averaging about fifteen dollars. Um, we have asked people to register for a ten session, ten week session. Um, we all kind of handled our registration separately for this session because we were so new and everything happened so quickly. Um, but starting in January, we'll be on a sort of a one-stop registration kind of thing. Um, and we will be offering different options if you're taking more than one class, that kind of thing. Um, we'll be offering classes together, so there will be a combined art and music class. There will be a combined music and yoga class, that kind of thing. Um, and right now, they're averaging about $15 a class. Drop-ins are welcome. Um, if you come in in the middle of the session, we'll prorate, or you can just come in and try anything you want. Um, the art class for adults is tonight at yeah. 6 o'clock. Come on by. <laughs> um, it's a lot of fun. Um, so did I answer the questions? Yeah, okay. So, um, Nancy, how did you market before you actually opened your doors? Okay. That's an excellent question. <laughs> so I personally have been teaching these music classes for a year. Um, we started at the Lewis Presbyterian Church. Um, there's a wonderful mom's club in the Lewis Rehoboth area. I did a demo with them, and I did two library appearances, and just from that, my music classes filled up. Um, I have five classes. Um, 
And so the Moms Club has kind of been our main demographic. They have taken care of us. They have done um, all of the word of mouth for us. Um, and the same goes with Siobhan um, and Judy. Both of them are in the Moms Club. Okay. So when we opened this location, I kind of ran on, on that marketing. I have not had to really push yet. Um, and we're, like I said, it happened so quickly. At this point, I think we're trying to get ourselves together before we really put it out there to the world. Um, we're lucky enough to be carried by that club and by the people that know us so far, but um, it only could go up from here, right? <laughs> Great. Have a question. Um, I'm beyond the daycare stage. I don't have any family members in daycare, but have you partnered with any daycare facilities to see if you could um, make inroads in there and share your wealth? Um, I have um, a daycare that I do every Wednesday. Um, we just go in and do a music class, and I've, I've gotten a couple other emails from people that are willing to start with us. Um, I know that Judy is in the daycare system as well. Um, Siobhan, do you have any daycare connections yet? Not yet. Yeah. And as we become more of a cohesive thing, like, like I said, right now we're all sort of separate using this space, but as we become more of a cohesive thing, we would like to become, to go into that market as, as create, you know, um, so we're in the daycare market as our studio, as ourselves, whether it's the art or the music or yoga or all of it, so. Nancy, I have to ask, did, did the two of you start with a business plan? <laughs> I knew that would come up. <laughs> Not yet. Um, I mean, I, we have, we each have one okay. for our own separate businesses. But you are partners in business. Yeah, I would say that, and that's something that we're working on is, okay. like I said, becoming And so you, more as business. partners going into a startup business, you've identified each role. Yes and no. Okay, let's talk later. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank All you. Right, great. Congratulations, though. Thank Any you. other questions? Anyone? All right. Oh, okay. Yes. It's just a comment that it's a shame that the public schools are reducing art. And Thank you. It's a shame that the public schools are reducing art and music as a way to save money, whereas your comments say that they enhance children's educational. Uh, abilities as they grow, grow through school. Absolutely. Which is something I agree with. Um, like I said before, I could be on my soapbox for hours about this. Um, Siobhan and I were actually talking yesterday. Um, Siobhan was a public school teacher, and she had an experience with one of the math teachers thinking that her work was useless or, or just fun or something like that. And my comment to her was, that math teacher doesn't realize that it was an artist that laid out your math book. That artist might not quite understand what x over y divided by 6 means, but that artist decided where on that page it would go so that you can see it and it's cohesive and you understand it. Um, you know, it was an artist that designed these chairs, an artist that designed that logo, and I think people forget that art is everywhere, but it's so commonplace. You don't, you don't think about it. You know, every company has an art department. Where do those kids come from? You know, so. That was a good question because I had one question before the last question. And that is, are you doing any collaborations with schools or organizations or associations that work with kids? Um, I have performed with um, Children and Families First, okay, um, which is, I'm not sure if mm -hmm. they're, they, um, sure. are you familiar with Children and Families First? Yeah. Okay, yes. <laughs> and also yeah. parents as teachers, same um, kind of thing they help with the, um, parents as teachers who are helping with, at home with what they can do with their kids to learn. Um, Judy, Siobhan, have you guys done any sort of, not yet? Okay, it's all things that we're exploring, right, so. So Nancy, what can we as a community do to help create studio for the arts to go you, to the next level? You can tell everybody. <laughs> you, can, um, you can come and create with us. Mm -hmm. You can allow yourselves the, the time and the, the fun to explore. Wonderful.